Ever wondered how carbide, that ridiculously tough stuff, is actually made? You hear about it all the time. Tungsten carbide, this, carbide that. It sounds like something cooked up in a top secret sci-fi lab, but the real story is way more epic and a whole lot hotter. Get ready, because we're about to dive into the fiery birth of one of humanity's most hardcore materials. It all starts with a simple, yet brutal, recipe. Take some carbon. Grab a metal usually, our boy tungsten and, crank the heat up to temperatures that would make a volcano sweat. We're talking thousands of degrees, way beyond anything your kitchen oven could dream of. Picture this massive industrial electric arc furnaces, glowing with an intensity that's hard to even look at. Inside, fine powders of tungsten and carbon are tossed together. It's like a cosmic bake-off, but instead of a cake, you're forging a material that can chew through solid steel for breakfast. As these powders get blasted with insane heat, the real magic happens. The atoms start going nuts, vibrating and zipping around until they literally fuse together. The carbon and tungsten atoms lock into a super strong crystalline structure, forming tungsten carbide. This isn't just a simple mix, it's a fundamental chemical transformation, creating a brand new compound with superpowers. So, what's the big deal about tungsten carbide? Well, this stuff is an absolute beast. It's incredibly dense and ridiculously hard so hard. In fact, that it ranks right up there with diamonds. It's the material of choice for anything that needs to cut, drill, or grind through other tough materials without breaking a sweat. Think about the drill bit that effortlessly bores through concrete, or the cutting tools in a machine shop that slice through metal like it's butter. That's tungsten carbide showing off its muscle. It's the unsung hero behind so much of our modern world, from construction to manufacturing, but tungsten carbide isn't the only player in the game. There's also its cousin, calcium carbide. Now, this one has a different kind of party trick. While it's also made by heating up carbon with a calcium source like lime, its claim to fame is what happens when you add water. The moment calcium carbide touches water, it fizzles and bubbles, releasing a flammable gas called acetylene. Yep, the very same acetylene gas that welders use in those torches that burn with a blindingly bright, intensely hot flame, capable of cutting and joining pieces of metal. So, one carbide builds things up by being tough, and another helps piece them together with fire. Pretty cool, right? The entire process of making carbide is a spectacular display of controlled chaos. You have these gigantic furnaces roaring, sparks flying everywhere, and molten material bubbling like lava. It's a dance between raw power and precision science. The engineers have to get the mix of powders, just right the exact ratio of carbon to metal is critical. Then, they have to control the temperature with pinpoint accuracy. Too hot, and you might get unwanted side reactions. Too cool, and the fusion won't happen. It's a high-stakes balancing act, where a small mistake can ruin an entire batch. After the furnace does its thing, the molten carbide is cooled, crushed, and milled into a fine powder, ready to be shaped into tools. Let's zoom in for a second, like with a super-powered microscope. If you could see the structure of tungsten carbide up close, it would blow your mind. You'd see these tiny, sharp-edged crystals of tungsten carbide embedded in a softer metallic binder, usually cobalt. It looks like a microscopic mosaic of armored tiles. The hard carbide crystals provide the wear resistance and cutting power, while the cobalt binder acts like a tough glue. Holding everything together and preventing the material from being too brittle, this combination is what makes carbide tools so damn effective they re both incredibly hard and tough enough to handle the shock and vibration of cutting. What s wild is that the fundamental principle behind making carbide has unchanged much since it was first discovered in the late 1800s. The core idea is still get things crazy hot until the atoms give up and form a new partnership. Of course, today's methods are way more refined. We have better furnaces, more precise temperature controls, and we're constantly experimenting with new recipes adding other elements to the mix to create carbides with even more specialized properties. Scientists are tweaking the grain size of the carbide crystals and playing with different binder materials to push the limits of strength, heat resistance, and durability even further. Think about the journey for a second. We start with simple powders, just dust, really. We subject them to hellish temperatures in a furnace that looks like it est straight out of a fantasy forge. And what comes out is a material so powerful it shapes the world around us. It's in the mining equipment that digs for resources deep underground. 
the surgical tools that require incredible precision, and even in the tips of ballpoint pens for a smooth writing experience. Carbide is everywhere, quietly doing the toughest jobs imaginable. So, the next time you see a construction worker drilling into a solid brick wall with zero effort, or you watch a documentary about a factory where robots are shaping metal parts, give a little nod to carbide. You'll know the secret behind that power. It's not magic. It's the result of some seriously extreme chemistry, a process that turns humble elements into a soup material. It says testament to human ingenuity or ability to take the basic building blocks of the universe and forge them into tools that build our future. And that's the story of how carbide is made. Pretty awesome, huh? Thanks for sticking with me on this deep dive into the world of industrial alchemy. If you enjoyed learning about the fiery birth of carbide, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos where we break down the science behind the stuff that makes our world tick. Got any other materials you're curious about? Drop a comment below and let me know. Until next time, stay curious.